let's dig into some issues. Uh, let's start with housing, which I know all of you have expressed uh, concern with. Uh, and I'm going to start with you, Ken Rudnick, first. Um, let's start with the MBTA Communities Act plan, which is uh, not before the legislature, but will now be before town meeting this fall. Um, the town is um, looking to propose two different options. The base compliance basically just hits and builds the minimum number uh, or allows for the building of the minimum number of housing units uh, required by the state law. The Needham housing plan goes further and would actually uh, allow for more housing there. Uh, Ken, which uh, plan do you support, the base compliance or the Needham housing plan? I'm 100% uh, for the Needham housing plan. Okay, help us uh, understand why. You know, I have some, as, as a young person, you know, it's nearly impossible for people to stick around in, in Needham after graduating high school. A lot of my peers um, have moved away and, you know, after college and graduating from college, you know, there's no starter homes in, in Needham. And obviously that's sort of adjacent to this MBTA um, act, but the reality is, as I see it, and for those who went to um, the public hearing, you know, just because it's going to allow for roughly uh, sub 4,000, more than 3,200 units, I believe, doesn't mean it's all going to come in. And it doesn't mean it's all going to come in at once. You know, we have to consider that it's going to be time for properties to hit the market. And not only that, we also have to sort of trust, you know, the invisible hand in the sense of builders are only going to buy and develop properties where they see profit in the future. So to those who are afraid of, you know, this increase in traffic, which we saw the consultant say, isn't going to, wouldn't be the case or this strain on uh, NPS, which, also was debunked, um, you know, not, it won't happen overnight. And it also won't fill all those units discussed to begin with. Now, on me, the other- I'm gonna stop you right there and we're gonna come back to housing in a second, but um, Josh, why don't you go next, next, tell us which of the two plans before town meeting do you support? I also support the Needham housing plan. I think it's the central issue in this entire election revolves around housing and increasing the supply. And I feel like the Needham, Needham Housing Plan does that more effectively. Great. Okay, uh, Patrick, uh, same question. Sure. So um, I'm, you know, intimately familiar with the with the plans. I attended all the home meetings via Zoom, um, and that was before Denise announced that uh, she was re resigning and the seat opened up. Uh, I look, I approach this a little bit differently than Josh and Ken. Um, one of the things about being a legislature and understanding relationships is knowing, you know when you're stepping on toes and when you're staying in your lane. And I can certainly say that I would have passed the MBTA Communities Act out of the legislature. Uh, at this point, it is a local issue and I'm happy to help and support uh, the select board in whatever they capacity they need or the other boards. Um, but ultimately, you know, I don't want to th put my thumb on the scales too heavy because um, there's people who know a lot more about it who have worked on it or are working on it now or doing you know, all sorts of webinars or meetings around town. So, um, and that's, you know, sort of that experience again, that I bring of understanding how to create the relationships and be able to build a system where we can deliver for folks. So, so you're saying you would not endorse either one of the plans? I'm saying I would support both plans. Well, obviously the, the, First plan gets voted on, then the second one. But would you vote in support of it? And would you tell your fellow town meeting member, town meeting members, to uh, support the larger plan, the Needham Housing Plan? I would. I don't think it would be appropriate for me to weigh in if I was, you know, as a state rep. And I think there's a long history, if you're, you know, familiar with politics and elected officials, and you know these circles where people, you know, don't want to put their thumb on the scales and you know change it, you know, because I'm as an elected official, I'm going to know more about what's going on at the state house, right? And I'm not going to know as much of what's going on down here. In this particular case, I, I know a lot, right? Uh, because I was following it all along. Um, but I still want to be mindful of the relationships. Um, and I want to make sure, sure. that I put myself okay. in a position. Uh, 
Yeah, thank you, Josh. Do you agree with that approach that you should be neutral on this if you were? I, I, I don't, with all due respect. I think that um, you collect all the information up and, uh, you know, you you got to pick a side, right? People are going to look to us for leadership and guidance. And I think, you know, the two plans have different approaches. And I think that we need to increase our stock of, of housing. And I think that the Needham Housing Plan does a more effective job of that. And, and also, just real quick, but also, like, I also want to just say, like, with relationships, being the, the principal of a school, I deal with so many people, right? Family, students, you know, I'm a 6 through 12 principal. I'm dealing with, I send out a weekly email that's addressed to thousands of people. Um, and, you know, if people aren't happy with the job I'm doing, they certainly will make it known. Um, my job currently is contingent upon building relationships, soliciting input, and really trying to form alliances between groups that are often in disagreement. So with relationships, I just want to make it known that I also have a lot of experience with that. It is, I would say, probably one of the main tasks of being a successful principal. Um, and I do think I can bring that expertise into the state house. Um, that's a skill I've learned in, in other paths, but I feel like it does link to the current job I'm applying for as, as a state rep. And, and Ken, how do you feel about the idea that Patrick doesn't think it's his role to endorse a plan? A town meeting? I think that being a resident of Needham should qualify you to have an opinion on it at the very least. <laughs> okay, Patrick, do you want to respond to any of that before we move on? Yeah, just as responding, you know, I'm certainly very supportive of the Affordable Homes Act that's being considered by the legislature, right? The uh, billions of dollars investment for public housing, for the Affordable Housing Trust, for the House Stabilization Fund, and so on and so forth. That's supposed to create, you know, 60, 40 to 60,000 units in the Commonwealth uh, over a relatively short, shorter period of time. So those are the kinds of things that I pay attention to now and looking at and understanding uh, and I think the governor is doing a good job pushing that. And I hope that the legislator does pass the Affordable Housing Act. So I'll, I'll throw this next question out to anybody who wants to answer it. Does anybody have an idea to increase our housing stock that isn't something we've heard of before? A new idea that would help uh, create more housing? Anybody want to answer that one? I, I think the only thing I'm considering... Um, is and and I I agree with Patrick. I think the Affordable Homes Act is a very strong bill, sweeping and bold, and I think it's it's going to help a lot with this, as well as the MBTA Communities Act, um, and of course the 40B. Um, even though Needham's in compliance, I think it's 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 helped some of our increase some of the housing stock. And but I think what I'm concerned with, and this is something I you know once again as an educator I've run into, I had a teacher resign last week. Right. She said that, look, I love this school. I love working here. Got a good relationship with administration and my peers. And I, I asked her, I said, well, well, then why are you leaving? She said she just simply couldn't afford it. Right. And I think that that's that's troubling that I'm having trouble keeping talent because of this affordable housing crisis. Um, and I would suggest that a tax credit towards certain members in our community would benefit these communities. So I think that the people, police, fire, teachers, nurses, the public servants who are trusted to put out our fires, protect our property, teach our children, if they can't afford to live with us, I, I think that's unacceptable. These are people who have an integral role in the community and they should be allowed to live in it. Okay, um, so a tax credit for municipal employees is one idea. Ken, do you have any? Yeah. Um, I don't have any new ideas, no. I, I think um, throughout this process, what I've been seeing a lot of, of is after looking at sort of the rate of production in, at Beacon Hill, um, what I've sort of come to see is, you know, I think we need to take what's already been sort of bouncing around Beacon Hill and, and continue to either improve upon that or make sure that things get passed at the end of the day. Um, from there. So no, I don't have any ideas. Um, Patrick, anything that in terms of increasing your housing stock that isn't been out there and isn't part of the housing plan now? or Yeah, you know, affordable, some, affordable housing is something I've worked on a lot. You know, we had a Needham Opportunities Inc. here in a long time that was responsible for throwing up the duplexes and limber chambers. And uh, we have a long history of doing a lot of affordable work. You know, 
two of the things that, you know, I haven't really fleshed these out as policy issues per se, but, you know, two ideas that I have is, you know, a non, you know, maybe private sector help, like a nonprofit that could subsidize certain groups of people uh, with a down payment or something like that through grants or perhaps through state funding um, oh, and some sort of rubric in order to award those grants. So, you know, housing would be opened up to more affordable, more affordable options to people. So here's a, need. I'll run this by the three of you that, that some believe that increasing the 40B law from a 10% to a 15% would increase uh, housing all across the state substantially and fairly quickly. Um, would anyone support that increasing the 40B law threshold from 10% to 15%? You just raise your hand, let me know if you do. I'd have to dig in a little bit more on the repercussions of that and also the effects to the district. Um, before I could weigh in, but I could certainly get back to you uh, with a position on that, Craig. And your Josh, you have a thought about that? Yeah, I, I think, you know, there's a lot in motion from the state currently with the Affordable Homes Act and the MBTA Communities Act. I, I'd be curious to see the effects of those before mm -hmm. increasing the 40B uh, percentage. I, I think we should have a little bit of patience. And that's stuff I've, I've heard from uh, people in the district when I'm I'm at their houses. Let's let's see the effects of some of these things. These are big sweeping bills that uh, could could address the issue substantially, and I'd be curious to give it a chance and see what the actual effects are. So so I guess I would say that folks like Ken, if not Ken, but his people his age can't afford to wait for a lot of things to take traction and, and for things to be built over a long time. I, I, it feels like there's some urgency here to really getting building and stuff. I don't know, Ken, do you think uh, either, do you have any thoughts about increasing 40B or other ways to like make sure that people like you, your peers can continue to stay in Massachusetts? Yes, I would say I'm in definitely in support of anything that will help peers stay, talent stay in Massachusetts. Um, however, with the specifics of raising from 10% to 15%, I would have to look into the ramifications of that, um, which it sounds like Pat and uh, Josh also echo. Um, however, I will say I'm very strong in the position where I know that we need more um, housing here. You know, a lot of my peers will finish up at school in Massachusetts and then move to Florida and then move to or then move to Houston or then move to Georgia. And, you know, if we're being told that if we're being told by the public and other residents in Massachusetts that they want us to stay around here, it's hard for us to believe what they have to say when they when it feels like, you know, just from an affordability standpoint, you know, they don't want us here. It's it's feels that they've made it clear to us that after we spend our time in Alston paying rent to go to school downtown that, you know, we're, we're out of here um, to look for a, a better future. 